Welcome back to The Magic and the Music. I'm Jen. I'm Randall. And today we're going to be giving you an overview and our first impressions of the newest Disney Vacation Club Resort, Disney's Riviera Resort. So stick around. So Disney's Riviera Resort is, as of this taping in 2020, it is the newest Disney Vacation Club Resort, and we were very fortunate to stay there in January, late January, early February of 2020. So it had only been open less than two months yeah, when we stayed great. there. Yeah, so we're going to let you know what we thought about it. So the first thing to know is that the Riviera Resort is inspired by the south of France and also southern Italy. So that Riviera, um, you know, kind of area like Nice and I guess kind of Monaco. Yeah, it has a smattering of each. Yeah, so, and that is one of the things that people have said is a strength and a weakness is it isn't really clearly one thing or another. Mm -hmm. But I think if you visit that region, you see that it's not necessarily one thing or another. It's, it's a mm -hmm. kind of blending of cultures. So um, that's what they were going for. Um, in terms of architectural uh, inspiration, there's definitely a lot that you can find kind of in particular for me in Nice and Monaco were the two places where I saw yeah. architectural inspiration. Um, it has a tower feature on it, um, which is very, very evocative of the Hotel Negresco in Nice. And mm -hmm. if you go check that out, um, and I'll, I can include a picture here, you can see that it has that tower feature um, just like the Riviera does. And then they kind of brought in some of the color inspiration as well. I think that like the, mm -hmm. the windows, I can't remember the name for it, but the windows that go through the roof, that's a certain kind of um, French style. Um, there is also an Elton John uh, <laughs> video that is pretty ridiculous uh, that was filmed at that hotel. That Hotel Negresco, yes, yeah, in like the 90s, <laughs> early 90s. It is something to watch. <laughs> yes. So if you get a chance to watch that, it's it's for the song Bruno. I'm Still Standing. It has Bruno Tognoli from Dancing with the Stars oh, yeah. as a dancer. So do yourself a favor <laughs> and it's hilarious. All right. So that's kind of the feel. Um, what's it feel like when you first walk in? Um, to be honest, the, the entryway, the port cocher, I think that's the right word. Mm -hmm. um, that's very fancy. And when, when you're actually getting off the bus, uh, it's really nice to see the. They have a hidden Mickey up in the. Uh, it's beautiful, yeah. The light the, uh, fixture, light fixture up above, mm -hmm. and that area is quite nice. But I, I will say, when you first walk into the lobby, the lobby is a little underwhelming. Yeah, um, it's smaller. You know, it's think it, more like Kidani Village, less Jumbo House. <laughs> yes, yes. It's not. It's not soaring heights, and we feel that uh, Disney should have left that upper story just above it open and then that would have probably fixed the issue all now it's beautiful design wise yeah. style wise it's beautifully decorated and um it's a really relaxing space it smells wonderful mm -hmm. um it has this beautiful fountain um that's illuminated that when you walk in it goes off to the sides yeah. and, and it's 
I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful space. But yeah, we feel like that's a place where they missed the mark a little bit. They could have gone bigger. And and adding to the ambiance, of course, the music. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have kind of quintessential sort of like, um, you know, kind of French sounding music, a little yeah. bit of Italian um, you know, it just kind of matches with that time yeah. period. Nothing obtrusive, kind of just in the background. Yeah, um, but it felt it felt nice. I have noticed in some resorts the soundtrack loops too quickly and it's too distinct, mm -hmm. and it and it irritates me. Mm. I noticed that um, at Art of Animation. I adore Art of Animation, <laughs> but their loop is too short, and like yeah. the the like fifth morning in a row <laughs> hearing the same music loop at the same yeah. time kind yeah. of made me crazy. That's not going to happen at Riviera. It's not that distinct, so no. you won't notice that. Yeah, yeah. I felt the music really just kind of blended into the background, but it was it was but nice. in a good way, enjoyable. Yeah. Okay, what? So we talked about the check-in in the lobby. What about the check-in experience? Well, we kind of didn't have one. We sort of yeah. Um, we sort of just did online check-in, and yeah. that was it. It was pretty straightforward. I think it's easy. Yeah. Um, they do have a smaller check-in area there at the front, but I will say. In terms of that check-in area, they have just a few desks. And I think because of the way that they're doing a lot of the check-ins now, they're doing it all mm -hmm. um, online. Yeah, there's not as much need for that space. Yeah. But it is a great space to wait, like if you're waiting for your Magical Express um, and it's like a really pretty and comfortable mm -hmm. place and there are you know, couches yeah. and chairs and things, so it's really nice. All right, so our next area we're gonna talk about is just kind of the grounds and the overall mm -hmm. space, like the hallways, mm -hmm. um, does have some long corridors and things. It is all in one building. This is huge yeah. because if it's summer, you're in the air conditioning yeah. in the hallways. I am not a fan of open air, um, you know, doors opening to open air in the summer heat. Yeah, it's definitely great um, in terms of the layout, in terms of the hallways. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt that the way that they had an interior route that you could take uh, to get over to say this. I think you could go all the way to the Skyliner have exit yeah. there underneath the arch. Yeah. So if it was really hot and humid, you have the option of always going inside, mm -hmm. staying inside. That is huge for us because that means that it's a year-round resort. Yeah. For us, so I would absolutely stay there in the summer. Uh, another thing they did that was great is that there are characters that are hidden into the carpet patterns. Mm -hmm. So you'll get Mickey and Minnie in like the regular hallways, and then the um like the areas um around the elevators have i think all the the yeah, five yeah. kind of in them all the main characters yeah so that was really um really well done and then another feature that's great is that they have and this is one of the most charming things mm -hmm. i think about riviera is that they have done different disney characters and scenes and films and things but they are inspired by the works of the masters mm -hmm. so um they'll look like European art, um, but then they're depicting Disney right. characters, which is really cool. Yeah, and they have those spread out throughout the resort, and they all look really great. Um, I wanted all of them. Yeah, because yeah. you can buy them. You can buy a, your own, you know, version of them. Yeah, which is great. Um, and that was super smart. That would have been a huge missed opportunity if they hadn't offered the ability to buy that. Yeah, definitely. So on our stay at Disney's Riviera Resort, we stayed mm -hmm. in a standard studio. And this is an all DVC resort, so every single room there is going to be a DVC unit. There are not regular hotel rooms, but a standard studio is the closest to a regular hotel room. And um, so that features, um, you have a, a queen bed, a Murphy bed. Um, uh, it actually has kind of a split bathroom setup, which is great. And we'll show photos of this um, in a separate uh, Riviera studio walkthrough or tour mm -hmm. and that we'll link here so that you guys can take a, a look at that because some of you may be interested in that some of you may look at other room types yeah yeah so um, we'll we'll kind of refer back to that later but I will highlight a couple of features in the Riviera rooms that applies to all of them and that is that these are generally speaking pretty big rooms yeah this yeah. the studio is the second largest I believe it's the second largest um, studio on Disney property and that is huge because it gives you a lot of space yeah the split bathroom setup, there are only a couple of other resorts that have that. So that is like a really appealing thing with the studio. Um, there are tons of USB ports. Yeah, there were USB ports everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so that was not a problem at all. Um, and then, um, we, of course, they had the fold-down Murphy beds. 
which yeah. they're beginning to install in some of the resorts. Yeah, I found that those beds are very comfortable compared to uh, the other pull-out couch beds. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the Murphy bed is the way to go. I hope yeah. they do that everywhere. Yeah, I know they had some initial problems with mounting those to the wall and the stability, <laughs> but hopefully that's all resolved. Should be something they can fix it's and fine. move on. So, um, And then finally, this was a big thing for me that I loved, is that they have, uh, when you walk in and you or you turn on the TV, your name, your, mm -hmm. your party's name, you know, it says welcome blank family, and it says your name on the screen, and then you can connect, and um, and it's just this beautiful kind of yeah. um, like interactive kind of element that's there on the the TV, and and I thought that was really neat and welcoming. Yeah, it it is also a smart TV, so it has some features. I think it runs Disney Plus or some other. I think server. they had yeah. I think we had the opportunity to watch that. They had some streaming yeah, things some that streaming we could watch at the very least. I don't recall the specific details, but. Um, it was definitely different than what we mm -hmm. were accustomed to in yeah. other DVC resorts. So it was, um, that was really cool. Yeah. And I love that. All right, moving to our next topic. That is the grounds and the pools and all the stuff that's mm -hmm. outside. So what did we think about all that? Yeah, I, I thought I, I really liked the grounds. Um, very well kept. Uh, they have Beautiful. some cool little things on the outside. They have a chess board and they have kind of a swing next to the chess board. And Shuffleboard, I think? Shuffle. Well, I think they had. Or was it? They they did have bocce ball. Oh, bocce ball. That's what yeah. it was. And they had a bocce court there that you could you could play with. And um, they also there's have, another game that they play, and I can't remember the name of it. But I don't know. <laughs> they have they have a lot of activities. Yeah. Um, and they have like a gelato cart, which we didn't oh, try, yeah. but they'll have a gelato cart out, which is you know it's pretty cool Italian yeah. thing to do. Um, yeah, I wish I. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, the pool is very pretty. I yeah. would say there. we didn't get a chance to swim in the pool mm -hmm. because when we went, it was um, kind of cold. It you was know? pretty cold out. <laughs> yeah, so we, even though we stayed four nights, we never had the opportunity to actually try out the pool. We just could kind of look at it. I mean, you could go in it, yeah. but for us, it was a bit cold. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm, the, there are two pools. And um, you know the ch children's play area looks really, really yeah. nice, and we're very eager to try that as soon mm -hmm. as we can. <laughs> um, and so hopefully we'll go at a time of year where it's not so cold. Yeah, I thought the the pool was fairly large. Um, there's also a nice space out kind of beyond the pool where you can actually watch the movies. I think mm -hmm. um, it's hard to say from because we weren't there for that. But I think if you're there at the right time, you can maybe even watch movies from the pool. Yeah, I don't know. It seemed have, like maybe that would be... The layout the looks direction. like it would allow it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, some of the um, highlights of the outdoor mm -hmm. space, well, one of the big ones is that you're right by the Skyliner, which oh, yeah. we'll talk about more um, on the transportation piece. But um, so a, a place that you would commonly walk is through this tunnel and past the water feature and these beautiful murals to get out to the Skyliner. Yeah. So those murals are absolutely amazing. Yeah. There is the Rapunzel uh, mural with the lanterns and, and Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. Yeah, and they're so oh, pretty, especially at night. Yeah. And they have lights in the pool, in the, the water feature, and so it kind of illuminates and glows. If they had put that in the lobby, that would have been like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've been perfect. <laughs> I think actually Riviera maybe shines more at night yeah. because it has a lot of really pretty features and the lighting's mm -hmm. really pretty and that kind of courtyard area is really pretty at night. I especially yeah. like that. Um, so um, now one thing that people kind of complained about when they were starting to build it was that it is right next to Caribbean Beach, which is a moderate resort. Did that bother you at all, that it was no. next to a moderate resort? It no. didn't bother me at all. It had zero bearing on my experience yeah. whatsoever. The fact that I could see that resort didn't matter. No, not, not at all. I mean, it's it's in the distance, and for the most part, you know, you're you're kind of in that bubble, I would say, like yeah. the Riviera bubble. So you're not... You're not really like looking off and saying, "Oh, that, there's some orange colors." It doesn't, it doesn't feel. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it doesn't fit. Yeah. It it really it fits fine. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of akin to how um, they made 
Tower of Terror mm -hmm. work where when you're in World Showcase or you're in Epcot and you're looking across the lagoon to oh, Morocco right, right. and you can kind of see Tower, Tower of Terror, Terror and it distance. blends in the color palette, like blends yeah. in with Morocco and you don't actually notice it. That's a little tip if you didn't know that. It actually was meant to yeah. blend in because of the sight line. I feel like that's kind of how Caribbean Beach is because it's like, yeah, you know, the French Riviera and Italian Riviera mm -hmm. and Caribbean Beach you know, the Caribbean are, are clearly not in the same place. Not the same. <laughs> but the color palettes aren't fighting. Yeah. Like, it, it doesn't distract you. No, def definitely not. Yeah. And I think even then, the the closest um, Caribbean beach area is, is it Martinique? Um, I don't even remember which, but it's, you have to go out by the skyline. It's quite a ways away. It. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not really close to you. So, I mean, there's, there's a good, I don't know. It's a, mile high? I, I don't maybe, know. Maybe it's a long way though. But it's it's a lot farther than you think it is. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel close at all. Yeah. So um and if you're not aware, um Riviera is located to the south of Epcot and specifically mm -hmm. south of World Showcase and actually a little bit to the south uh e east, just a little bit southeast. Mm -hmm. And so you are quite close to um Epcot and it is possible depending on your room location mm -hmm. it is possible to watch the um, the Epcot fireworks shows and you actually to our surprise and delight could see Magic Kingdom fireworks off in the yeah. distance and um, and then if you're on certain areas of the building you can actually see things at Hollywood Studios, Hollywood Studios you can see also. the Star Wars fireworks yeah. um, and some of the little elements of um, Fantasmic Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> and you can kind of see, like, um, Tower of Terror, and you can see the, the spires yeah. and Galaxy's Edge. So there's a lot to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, pools. We already talked about the pools, so I think we're good there. Okay, so transportation. Let's talk about transportation for Riviera. Yeah, I really thought the that... The infamous Skyliner. Oh, my gosh. Dun, Skyliner. Dun, dun. Have you heard that you will roast... Alive. Have you heard that the Skyliner <laughs> is a death trap? That's what people say. Oh, man. Well, we've been on it. Yeah. It's, it's Granted, not... we have not been stuck on it for three hours. But even then, it's not... Um, so, when you get on the Skyliner, if, if you look around, there are a bunch of vents that you can actually control and open. And um, once you open those vents, you know, you're at kind of an elevation. So, even if you're stuck up there, um, there's going to be some wind. And I think that even on a really hot day, um, the wind is what's going to cool you off. And we've, I noticed that every time we got into a Skyliner gondola, mm -hmm. we immediately kind of assessed, like, do we want to open a vent, close a vent? Is it cold? Is it hot? Yeah. There were, I mean, we were there in the winter, but there were a lot of times where we were actually quite cold and we wanted to close, close all the vent. of it up. Yeah, as yeah. much as possible. And there is kind of an area on the bottom that always remains open. Yeah, so even if you close both vents, I mean, it's there, like you it can't, nothing can open. fall out it, but. So um, yeah. there's still some vents open kind of underneath the seats. Yeah, so you can't completely mm -hmm. shut the thing down. There's always going to be yeah. like ventilation. But uh, but yeah, you actually have a lot more control than, than yeah. I thought you would, which yeah. was great. And it's it's such a short ride too. Yeah. I mean, the, the amount of time that you spend on the Skyliner is, you, you blink and you're there, you know? And yeah, and in a way I wanted it to be longer because there's yeah. so much to see. And I wanted to take pictures, and yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really fun. I loved every minute of our ride on the Skyliner. It was really cool. And yeah, yeah I know they had their their one issue um, a couple weeks into operation or a week or two into operation, but you know, I trust that they're gonna resolve those things and move on. Yeah, I think that even then, that was that was good for them to work out the kinks, and now they they kind of know what they're doing. And I mean, even in a worst case scenario, it wouldn't be like that bad. Um, is it bad that I kind of want to get evacuated, like with the cherry picker? Like I want the lip. I want like I a T-shirt that says I, <laughs> I survived. Got the, yeah, I got evacuated from the Disney Skyliner. <laughs> I want that, but I'm that weird person. That, yeah, like, I like that. I like the weird, unique experiences. So, still on the topic of transportation, what about the others? We talked yeah. about Skyliner, which can take you to Epcot in the International Gateway, or it could take you to Hollywood Studios. Uh, one thing to note about the Skyliner is that it doesn't stop when coming through the station. So it slowly traverses through the station. And during... This is at the Riviera station. At the Riviera station. Yeah. Uh, and something to keep in mind is that 
during the morning, if it's loaded up from Caribbean Beach, it or Pop will, Century or, or whatever, Pop Century, yeah. the the cars you have to wait for an open one. So sometimes you could wait for a few cars. But, but honestly, I, it wasn't too much. I, of a deal. I think the longest we've ever waited was like yeah. one minute. Uh, the only time we ever had any kind of line yeah. whatsoever was at closing right closing. after Phantasmic. Right. We went and got in the line and it was long and we were like, oh no. How long is this going to take? And I think it was nine minutes. Yeah, it wasn't, it was, it was short. <laughs> it was like several hundred people. And we were so much closer than the buses that I, I preferred it still. You oh know, yeah, even, even if, with even the nine you, minute wait, it was Even fine. if we immediately got on to a bus, it would have still been a longer trip. <laughs> right. The other part is that if you have a stroller, the Skyliner oh, yes. is the way to go. Yes. Or probably if you had a wheelchair or yeah. an ECV, I think Any that would be huge. Yeah. Anything anything that rolls that needs to get on the Skyliner, <laughs> the, use the Skyliner. Oh, it was great. Much better than the bus. Yes. All right. So clearly we like the Skyliner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then, of course, other transportation option mm -hmm. is that you can take the bus. For yeah. Magic Kingdom and for Animal Kingdom, you would take the bus. Or if you're somebody who has an aversion to the Skyliner, you yeah. can take the bus. Um, I don't know that they run them quite as frequently um, for the res for the uh, parks that are serviced yes. by the, the Skyliner, but um, the buses were fine. Something I really like, the bus, bus stops were out a bit, but that was yeah. not unusual for like no. a Disney resort that was pretty normal, but they had a covered walkway the entire way. Yeah. And that's a big deal. As we know, it can rain really hard in <laughs> really Florida. Hard. So if you were in a downpour, that would be like a really ideal situation because you never have to get drenched. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're at the food, the food, the good stuff. The food. How about the food <laughs> at Riviera? How was the food? I mean, it's got to be good because it's inspired by Italy and France, right? Yeah. Well? Two combinations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty good combo, actually. Yeah. yeah so um, there are several food options. Mm -hmm. the, we'll just kind of go down the list of these. We experienced most of them. Um, so the first is Le Petit Café, which is on the main floor, the same area as the lobby and kind of off to the mm -hmm. side. Um, you can get snacks, coffee, cappuccinos, lattes, all those kinds of drinks. Um, I got the milk chocolate ganache tart, oh. which was $7.99. It was delicious. It was nice to have an option. That was kind of like a late night snack. Mm -hmm. It was nice to have an option. I could just run downstairs real quick and just get like a nice little treat yeah. that was kind of on par with like something I might have gotten at um, Les All Boulangerie mm -hmm. um, and Patisserie, which is in... Uh, in the France Epcot. Pavilion, so it was yeah. nice because like I didn't have to run all the way to Epcot for that. I could <laughs> I could get it in the resort, which is just what I wanted. So. Yeah, they also have a really great little library right there that you can sit in, and I think they do also serve some alcoholic drinks. That you um, can get. I yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to check on that one. Yeah, but I know they have a lot of coffee and all that kind of stuff. I think I tried to order something. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one is Bar Riva, and this is next to the pool. And it is nice because it, it opens up right to the, the main feature pool. Um, and that has um, entrees, desserts, drinks, a full menu. You can sit down yeah. and eat a full meal there. Um, and it has a full bar and everything. It's a beautiful space. Yeah. Lots of kind of blue, like... Um, Blue yeah. tile work and uh, yeah, and cool pictures. It's mm -hmm. really cool decor, and it also has a refillable mug refill station just on kind of the, the end. Exterior. Yeah, right on the outside yeah. there, which is a great great location for that. We did not get to eat there. No, we didn't. But um, we did refill our mugs there. Uh, oh, so yeah, <laughs> th this is uh, this is actually a good tip. There is that uh, if it's late at night, that's where you would get your refill for your. Your mug instead of having to go all the way into the uh, the normal um, quick service. Yeah, so that was convenient yeah. because you could do that pretty much any time, at least that we found. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Bar Riva, we can't wait to try it out. We've heard really good things mm -hmm. about it. Um, so that would be a great place, um, especially if you had like older kids who could swim independently, mm -hmm. you know, and you didn't have to like be with them every. If you had like teenagers, that would be a great place to yes to hang out while they're swimming. Out, yeah. Get so, my um, get my adult beverage. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Um, okay, the next one is Primo Piatto. Mm -hmm. And I really, really liked Primo Piatto. It yeah. was the quick service mm -hmm. restaurant for the um, for Riviera. 
and it features the um, drink refill station again. Mm -hmm. um, and I had some of my very favorite meals of the whole trip. Yeah, there. yeah, it was really good food. Um, it's it's quick service, but it's kind of quick table service because they actually bring yeah. out the food to you. Yeah, service was so, wonderful. Yeah, you order, but then they bring it out to you and. Uh, it was um, really great. Uh, I it's beautiful love... atmosphere. It's pretty. Oh yeah. Like the it it doesn't feel like a cafeteria. Like sometimes no. the quick service at the resort can feel like a cafeteria. This didn't. This felt like yeah. a restaurant. Yeah, that was a great. Uh, great experience. It's comfortable. Yeah. Um, and so my favorite meal of the entire trip is one that I had there, and that was the tuna niçoise salad, um, and that seared rare tuna, crispy greens, potatoes, egg, Dijon vinaigrette, and that was $13.99. I cannot wait. I'm like dreaming about having <laughs> that meal again. Oh, it's, it was so good. On I think I had it twice. I think I actually got the same thing on two different days. On the flip I side, I got the Riviera burger, which is excellent. How's that the flip side? Well, I mean, it's less healthy for you. Oh, health-wise, <laughs> I see. Because admittedly, he got that burger, I think, um, in the evening and yeah. brought it back up to the room. Yeah. And I kind of attacked him and stole some of that burger because it smelled half. so good. Um, and the, the Riviera burger had um, grilled portobello, mushrooms, Swiss, caramelized onions, brioche roll, and it was served with a choice of soup or mono and herb fries. Uh, side salad or fresh fruit bowl and yeah. I think we did we try the fries and we, we did the fries try this okay I, they were very good oh yeah yeah very so good. all good stuff and I it was really hard to I think I got that one and took it to go like to the airport oh, yeah yeah that was our uh, to go option at the end of the trip. Great. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we would definitely eat at um, mm -hmm. Primo Piatto I know that there are some people who've had not as great experiences I think if you order well off that menu yeah I think you'll be good um, our and our finally the big one, Topolino's Terrace. Yeah, Topolino's Terrace is the signature dining restaurant mm -hmm. up on the top of the Riviera, and it does have a view of That's the great. fireworks um, at Epcot. And I think mm -hmm. you could probably get a bit of a view too of Hollywood Studios. So we had a nine o'clock reservation, and the Epcot yeah. fireworks, which at the time they were doing um, Epcot Forever, and. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, and that's when it started. They seated us like the best spot. The, the <laughs> you could not have picked a better spot. Yeah. We were at a table right up against the window that was yeah. closest to the fireworks, and and they seated us like seconds before the fireworks yeah. began. Yeah, it was kind of perfect time. Yeah, and the waiter kind of like checked in really quick and then just was like, "I know you probably just want to watch these, and I'll just come back. I'll come back. <laughs> I'll get you a drink, and I'll come back when the fireworks are over." Yeah. So it was great. Um, how was that meal for you? Oh, it was good. Um, I got the tomahawk uh, veal chop, yeah, and that came with uh, potato, uh, potatoes and onion and uh, lemon veal au jus, um, and it was it was good. It wasn't my favorite thing that I've ever had there. It, it's definitely a, a, something different that you can't get like in many other places, and it is. It is a very Instagrammable dish. I will say that. The, oh, because it has like the bone sticking out. The bone out. is like sticking out. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this. And it's something you can't really get many other places. Yeah. And that was $54, by the way. Yeah. Um, um, I just wasn't as into that dish as much. Okay. Um, I probably would have just preferred more of like a more standard steak, but like a really good steak. So I actually loved my meal at oh, yeah. Topolino's Terrace. Um, I got the bouillabaisse, which uh, has is a Provencal fish stew. It had seared black cod, mm -hmm. uh, turbo, I don't know what that is, uh, cockles, mussels, fennel, and saffron rui, and that was $48. I had always wanted to try bouillabaisse. I had never actually tried mm -hmm. it before. I only knew about it from French class, <laughs> and I thought, oh, hey, that's such a fun name for a, yeah. for a dish. And, um, and I love seafood, so I mean, I figured I couldn't really yeah. go wrong. And so I'm like, here's my chance to try it. And um, and it was wonderful. I loved it. Um, it was a lot of fish. She got yeah, a ton of Tons seafood. of food. And um, and there was a wonderful sauce, or a kind of a spread. Mm -hmm. And I actually put that on the bread. And the bread is, the bread service that came with the meal was wonderful too. Yeah, yeah it was it was great. Um, anything, everything you expect of like French baking, you know, oh, bread, yeah, bread's great. always good. We cannot wait to try the yeah. breakfast, the character breakfast there. Oh. We do have reservations for our next trip. 
which hopefully, fingers crossed, will be happening. Um, and we'll try out that, that yeah. character meal. All right. Uh, and they do accept tables in Wonderland at, um, at Topolino's Terrace. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we are moving to the gift shop shopping. Got to spend some money. Yeah. I <laughs> thought, so there's kind of a small-ish gift shop, I would yeah. say, at Riviera. It's also in the main lobby area. Mm -hmm. um, it was good. And there, yeah. it was nice because there was Riviera-specific merchandise. Like they had the Mickey and Minnie and um, different character plushes with the special outfits. That was really cool. Just for Riviera. I, I really like those. Um, it's Painter Mickey and uh, was... Don't make Minnie me rattle all of them off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but really... Minnie was a writer. Right? Yeah. So the characters are wearing special like kind of artist inspired yeah. you know, um, outfits, which is super adorable. Yeah. Um, so that was great, and they had like I mean there there are different things. There are shirts and bags and mm -hmm. you know different things you can get purses. Yeah, and they have DVC merchandise there as well. Yeah. It's kind of a small gift shop. Yeah, but it was good. Yeah, it, it worked. And uh, oh, it actually had some food. Right, it a had decent amount of food. Kind of the standard fare that you would see at a DVC uh, gift shop, where you know it's got uh, pizzas, microwave pizzas, sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Like Stouffer's meals and things like that. Or, and, yeah. uh, soft and, drinks. And you might, I know some of you might say, why would you ever want that? Well, because um, it is a little yeah. more expensive, you know, to get it there. Well, because like we'll always hire a babysitter to come in mm -hmm. for one night. And we often, it's a long enough period of time that we need to provide food like for our kids and yeah. the babysitter. And so oftentimes we'll be buying like frozen dinners or mm -hmm. things that the babysitter can prepare in the room. So um, we used to kind of, Go. What is that about? Why would you have that? And <laughs> now we're like, oh, I get That's it. Why you have I it. get it because we need to like feed the babysitter or yeah. whatever, <laughs> or the kid just won't eat anything tonight, and we just yeah. have to go get him that little frozen All pizza, right. yeah, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, so great gift shop. Um, no complaints there. Uh, one thing that's really nice in the gift shop is they have a kiosk for buying the paintings. Oh yes. So you can go in there and. Many of the paintings have different sizes, so you can select something that's on the larger scale or the smaller scale. Um, you can get them like, I think you can get them with some different frame options, mm -hmm. and I think you can also get them like on a canvas. Right, canvas or more. I, maybe you paper. can just get a print. Yeah, yeah. that's possible too. I, we didn't look, we didn't dig in too deeply. We loved them, but they're not cheap, and so the things we would have wanted would have been very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, so we kind of passed on that, although I, but, I do love them. But we did see some people actually having their paintings sent out from yeah. there. And they, they will send it to your house too. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice that, you know, you, you can order it there. You don't have to like go out and try and find it. Plus you can see the painting in real life somewhere in the resort. Right. And so they're all throughout. Yeah. You can go down the different hallways and kind of... Kind of try and hunt it down and then you know, say, oh, that's the one I want. And like, that's the size or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That was a really cool, a cool um, thought. And some of them are actually the things that are in your room. Right. So if you have one like in the room that you're like, I love this, I want this yeah. for my house at home, well, you can get it. Um, okay. Um, so what are your final thoughts about Riviera? Would you stay there again? Yes. I, I would. In a heartbeat, right? <laughs> yeah, it's great. I can't get there fast enough. Yeah, I have to say, really, the convenience factor uh, for access to Epcot as well as to Hollywood Studios is really excellent. Um, if the Skyliner wasn't there, uh, I'd probably have to question that because it's it's just having that, uh, that ability is a huge bonus. Yeah. Um, for the points that it takes to stay there so and the other thing yeah because the point chart is the points are pretty high mm -hmm. um, but being able to see fireworks from multiple mm -hmm. theme parks I mean from your room we were in a standard studio and we could watch we could stand on our balcony and watch yeah. fireworks I mean that's like the dream that's yeah. the Disney vacation dream <laughs> is to have that and so you know, you're going to have kind of high points for that mm -hmm. kind of capability. Um, and but it, it's it was really cool. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. It's it's great. And, you know, one thing I really loved about the resort is just it is compact. And uh, when you have been at 
a Disney theme park all day long and walking around everywhere, it is nice to come back to a resort that is not so sprawling that the thought of going to the quick service is like a daunting task. Yes. You yes. know, it's some it's, other resorts, it's like, oh man, do I really want to go back yeah. to get food? Or I forgot something and I Right. But here it's like, yeah, it would take you five minutes. Yeah. No, no big not deal. even that. And it's air conditioned yeah. when you go. So it's not it's inconvenient. Super easy. Yeah. I, that was huge for me. So, mm -hmm. All right. So overall, you can tell we really loved Riviera. Full disclosure, we are DVC owners at Riviera. Mm -hmm. That is one of our home resorts. Um, and we bought it more than a year ago now. Can yeah. you believe that? More wow. than a year ago. Uh, <laughs> and we had never seen it. You know, it uh -huh. wasn't open until uh, December. I believe it was December 16th of 2019 is when they opened mm -hmm. it. So we bought it uh, a good, like, seven, eight months um, before... Uh, it opened. We bought it like in the first couple weeks mm -hmm. that they were selling it because we just knew we wanted it. Yeah, and they were offering it at the time a pretty good deal for adding on there. Yeah, I think it's still yeah fairly good deal. But <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, yeah, Riviera is great. Now these points do have the resale restriction. Yeah. What What are your thoughts about that? Uh, I mean, nobody likes it. We don't like right. it. We no. don't want it. Disney or DVC, take it away, please. All right. Please. <laughs> if, if you don't know what we're talking about, the restriction is that if you buy a Riviera contract and then you resell it, the person you resell it to can only use those points at Riviera. So that means that they can only stay at Riviera, essentially. Now there's thinking, people are thinking that maybe when they open up their next set of resorts, which they're doing reflections and- Yeah, few, reflections next. A few others, uh, that those will be included in this new grouping. I don't think they will uh, be. Yeah. I don't think so. It's tough to say. So uh, so like the, two, the negatives really about that are um, if we ever wanted to sell this contract mm -hmm. at Riviera, in theory, it might be worth less because yeah. the buyer doesn't have as much flexibility. So that does take away a little bit of the value of the contract we purchased. On the flip side, if we wanted to purchase a resale contract, which we have purchased resale before yeah. as well, we purchased direct and resale, um, then we do not have an, I mean, we, we really don't have options. Like we yeah. don't want to buy a contract that is limited only to Riviera. And if we were to buy that, it would have to be a lot cheaper. So you can see yeah. the conundrum here, the catch-22. Um, and uh, so I don't like that Disney did that. Mm -hmm. And you might say, then why did you buy at Riviera? Because we wanted to stay at this yeah. resort and we knew we needed to have 11 month booking to get um, a standard studio because that is a great, great room. Yeah. Um, so we bought a small contract. That's our response is mm -hmm. we will only buy a small contract here. And if we ever had to sell points, this would be the last one. Last one. That we would sell because yeah. we do see a significant disadvantage to the resale. There, there is one special feature about Riviera that's kind of interesting is that, that they have the tower rooms. Oh, yes. Uh, which they're more of a studio size, not really They're hotel. very small. They're, they're very, they're very, very small. compact. And they only sleep two. Yeah. So I think if you were um, just a couple, it might be an excellent budget way to kind of stay in a more deluxe resort. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you have to have the points to, to stay there, you know, yeah. so it's, uh, and then you're- And the tower uh, rooms all have <laughs> nice views and you can see fireworks. They all point in kind of the right. prime direction. Uh, so, I mean, the tower rooms are great and they have yeah. a really nice bathroom. I would stay there with you. Yeah, I mean, definitely. like for a couple, especially for like a weekend, I don't think I'd want to stay there for a whole week or something. Uh, yeah, I, but I guess if I'd you have were, to see if it. you were doing kind of just a weekend, like oh, totally. perfect, yeah. So, so there you go. Um, that's it. There you have it. That is Disney's Riviera Resort. Overall, a really great place yeah. to go. We can't wait to get back there. And even on our next trip, though, we're not booked to stay there. Mm -hmm. We definitely plan on going, visiting, mm -hmm. dining, hanging out, and uh, we just can't get enough of it. So yeah. we hope you guys get a chance to visit Disney's Riviera Resort. If you aren't staying there, you can still visit. So make sure you take advantage of the hotels around Disney World. Visit the Deluxes. It's a really fun way to kind of expand your vacation. So that's all from us today from the magic and the music. If this video has been helpful to you, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to be notified of future content. 
it helps out our channel so, so much yeah. for you to subscribe. And it's free, costs you nothing, so yeah. we would really, really appreciate your support. And if you have any comments you want to make about Riviera, what you think about the resale restrictions and all of that stuff, uh, we would like to hear what you think about it. Yeah. And maybe if enough of us talk about it, we can convince Disney to change their minds. Come on, we'll Disney. See. We'll see. Come on, Disney. Uh. <laughs> Don't you want us to buy more Riviera points? <laughs> Come on. Work with us. We just here. can't until you take <laughs> that restriction away. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Magic in the Music. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful day. And remember, there's, there's magic, magic in, in the, the music. music. Bye. Bye.